Okay, thank you. I, a little bit about myself. I'm been, I'm a consultant to the city of Reykjavik and have been working with them for this GIS project for almost 30 years now. So it's a long time and seen a lot of things. And uh, I welcome this opportunity to speak to you and uh, talk a little bit about the city of Reykjavik and how they operate now with maps and apps. Is it not transferring? Yeah, I'm trying to pro progress. This one. This one. This one. No, no, this one. This one. Okay. Okay. I would, yeah. I would, uh, yeah. I will uh, talk a little bit about the organization. The project is organized and will be have a short technical overview of and followed by a description how the present data and information to the public, and then last, how they work internally. The Reykjavik GIS project covers the entire city. It's about 270 square meters and serving a population of 128,000 now. Um, but the capital area with municipalities around Reykjavik is uh, almost 200,000 in inhabitants. They operate uh, like 15 general themes with over 200 different layers of data and 100 tables, and also have connections to external data like uh, population registry, address database, building inspection, road maintenance, etc. The official name or an abbreviation of the Reykjavik GIS project is uh, LUKR. It's a uh, abbreviation of the called Land Upplýsinga Kervi Reykjavíkur, which is uh, even difficult for us Icelanders to say, so I wouldn't ask anybody else to try it. But it's a, a formal cooperation uh, between the city of Reykjavik, mostly the Department of Environment and Planning, also Reykjavik Energy, who is a general utility company operating electricity, water, sewage, uh, telco, and some more, and a private company called Mila, which is a telco company. They've been using or operating together for more than 30 years, and it started when, while they bought ArcGIS in uh, like 1989. And uh, one of the uh, reason for the success of the project is probably because it has a certain structure and uh, operated by a board of, from all the members. The <coughs> project has a manager who oversees that the project is going well. Also a technical committee that meets now, about four times a year, in the beginning it was much more frequent. Have dozens of uh, skilled workers in the GIS field and uh, hundreds of other employees uses the data. Uh, a little bit about the data. It's uh, having building streets, parcels, and utilities, which are basic themes. Uh, and then they have this connection to Reykjavik Energy and Mila, which provides 
data from their utility systems and gets central information from the uh, central database. They have uh, database about traffic accidents, business registry, addresses, uh, buildings, and so on. So it's a uh, Quite many databases and data located in different locations when, when they are, are trying to are combined and working together. Uh, in the beginning, uh, data was uh, a lot in, stored in central databases and transferred in between, and it's still done, but a lot of the interaction now comes through web services. A little bit about the history. The formal cooperation started in 1988, uh, and in 1989, they decided to start using ArcInfo from ESRI after an open bidding. And a year later, it was started in beginning of general data input, scanning old maps, uh, trying to make them digital. It was a uh, work that lasted, was a heavy work that lasted for six years until the end, but uh, they had, were able to start operating much sooner with limited data. And, uh, but they have always been like uh, trying to be innovative and using the technology to its uh, best. And as long as in, in 97, they started to deliver and make data available on the internet uh, so people could type in, log in, and, and uh, select data and, and get it from their usage. It was mostly for contractors and, and other city departments. And then they advanced from uh, using spatial databases, uh, web apps, and uh, increased the app usage later on. A little bit about the technology. It's uh, stored in databases. We have uh, special uh, OK, <laughs> so I have to look this way. So, but we have uh, the, the databases, file server, uh, disk server, and uh, two ArcGIS server, or one ArcGIS enterprise with portal and, and uh, connects to, to uh, ArcGIS online, and also server that is for the city specially designed web application, which I will now start to work on. It's called Borgar Vefsio, and it is the face of this project to the public. It is uh, like, has like two views. One is to the public, and the other is internally, and I will end by talking about that, the internal view, but first about the public. But the first version of it was published in 1999, so it will celebrate its 20th anniversary next year. And below, on the left, you can see the first version used by ARC IMS software, which is no longer uh, exists. And then it has developed through few version into the current mobile-friendly application which runs on our ArcGIS server and is mostly used by JavaScript. And of course, the information and, and everything like that has increased uh, since the first day. But it was quite amazing project at that time. So here is the general interface. The users, they can select from themes. They can select to display a conventional map or 
aerial imagery. Uh, in recent years, the city takes aerial images at the resolution of 10 centimeters every year of the city. So they can update that and have a good imagery of the data of their city. But the base maps, they are updated more frequently. And I will skim over a lot of the uh, information that it uh, makes available. You can see all kinds of utilities, um, hot and cold water, electricity, uh, telco cables into each building. You can see, get information about it. However, recent development has been so that uh, the utility companies are putting more restrictions on the information they provide about the systems. It so, uh, has something to do with uh, security, and they don't want to publish it all. But the public can get information about uh, demography, about the inhabitants in uh, certain age groups at certain districts, so they, the general public cannot dig into each household, it's thought of being too personal. Uh, they have, as I told you earlier, they have take uh, aerial photos every year. And uh, you could easily compare old aerial photos with new one. For example, here on the screen, you see photos from, from uh, 2004 and 2018. And you can see that has changed a lot here in the harbor area. You can also compare base data. Here is uh, as well as long as into 1999. Here you can see a change in uh, some road networks. The left one is 1999 and right one is today and you can select the time frame you are using and, and see how things can have changed. You also get the information about drawings and documents of buildings. These are the public drawings, approved drawings of buildings. You just select the building and all the uh, drawings with measurement pops up. You can get uh, traffic info. Uh, or, or routing, they have put pedestrian routing, so you can find the way to walk between two points, and you can see the, uh, they have two options, the shortest path and the safest path, and the, as you can see there, the safest path can be quite long sometimes, uh, as it has not the official structures that are required for fully safe walking, like uh, crosswalks and, and things like that. Five minutes left. Okay. You can get uh, information about traffic, pedestrian and cycling, uh, the amount of, of uh, for special counters on uh, for yesterday on over a different period, also speed of cyclists, uh, and for special occasions you get uh, information about cars, number, speed, and stati statistics about how they, this, uh, if they are over the speed limit, and how many of them are over the speed limit, the maximum and minimum information. You can get uh, information about the elevation. Here is a classic route if a tourist arrives to the central bus station and to the most popular tourist location. So it's a steep walk up there. You also provide information about public services. Here is a map where they are showing when and how they are, are uh, moving the lawns or cutting the grass around the city. 
And it's actually, which I will show a little bit later, it's based on an app that the operating officers have to fill in the data in the field. You see location of various city services, schools, uh, kindergartens, or where you can lease or rent gardens for vegetations. People can see where there are available spots or where the spots are full. You have access to the uh, city master plan. You can get detailed info about what the plan is for certain lots and what you have there in number of people, uh, number of certain buildings, etc. So you can uh, compare the current status with that of the plant. You can also get information about all construction projects in progress, how they, uh, the time that it will take and, and uh, the, and certain conditions about it. They also make the data available uh, to the public in uh, two uh, programs. One is the ArcGIS Open Data Platform, where you can search for data and get it for free, download it. Other is a data delivery hub, where the users sign in with an official digital ID, and they can select different formats like CAD or even different map projections. They got information about, uh, that's now I'm turning into the internal stuff, which only employees can see. They have information about the car parking and all the inspectors of project like cleaning up the streets, uh, cleaning up pavements, moving grass, cutting grass, uh, all maintenance. They have apps, easy to use apps where they can select what have been done and monitor the status and it, the information will be provided to the citizen. You have also uh, all kind of additional tools One minute. to get detailed data about buildings types of certain regions. Users can select the areas interactively and uh, get information about the types, aids. They can take the data, see it in a tabular view, export it to Excel, see the property values, and the advantage is that they can draw up their own areas and, and select whatever they want to. They have information about demography, uh, how it has developed over the years, uh, information about the individuals, who owns properties, who lives there. And finally, I want to show you the latest project, which is for uh, the social services, which has to deliver food to the elderly people every day. And they have started to use ArcGIS Online for routing. And then they get the information, the driver who takes the meal to the people, he gets information about where to drive, the route is optimized, and he gets information about the order who has to take it in an app and uses the ArcGIS Navigator to travel between the city. So, to say thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Stefan, for your presentation. Thank you.